Hello, everyone. Welcome to Slay to Success talk show with your queen, Rochelle Hemingway. And I'll tell you what, y'all. Happy, happy newest year to all of you out there. I hope that you're feeling good. I hope you're feeling inspired. I hope you're feeling renewed and refreshed so that way you can soar in 2024. So if you are here with me tonight, go ahead and let me know. Put into the comments where you're viewing in from. You know, what are you doing tonight? All right, we are going to have a full conversation, a full conversation. So I am live streaming, as you know, here in Facebook. So hey, Facebook family, friends, LinkedIn, how, how's everybody in the professional world out there and on YouTube, okay? And so if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I highly recommend that you do because the topic that I'm going to be talking about, I have completed, I don't know, about eight, nine videos in there so that you can go back, you could take a look at, you can figure out where exactly am I at when she talks about this particular subject. So I am Rochelle Slay Queen Hemingway, and I am the CEO and founder of Slay to Success, which is a leadership and transformational consultant service business. I empower women who are either working in executive leadership roles, or more importantly, women who are transitioning after a long career step into their authentic, memorable, personal brand with 10x confidence so they can gain lucrative opportunities. And I share strategies, okay? I live in strategies because I feel like if you don't have a plan of action as to what you're doing and why you're doing it, it could be for all not, right? And so this is the place where you can come and get this information. So if you're here and you're tuning in, let me know and the comments will pop up for me and I'll give you a big old shout out for stopping in and spending some time with me tonight. So again, we are live. And so I am your featured guest. Okay. Normally on this show, we have other men or women who come here onto the show to tell us how they are slaying it. Okay, so slay. Let's talk about slaying, okay? They are slaying it on their own terms, but I want to talk to you all about the word, what it stands for, and what the acronym is. Slay means to kill it, to dominate it, and to nail it, to be on point, to impress greatly, and to dream and work hard until you own it. It, the acronym S stands for stay ready to be ready, L, lead out loud, A, a sense of family, a sense of community, and Y, you are built to last. I talk through those life and leadership philosophies when I'm out and about because as a professional keynote speaker, as a self-published author, now a personal brand expert, a mentor, and a United States Air Force 30-year veteran, I know what is required to show up and be the best versions of yourself. And so tonight we're going to talk specifically about personal branding. And I know some of you are like, oh my gosh, she continues to talk about this, but I want to share with you and I want you to explore this concept, if you will. Everything that I have is branded. I am a brand. The brand is me. And this is what we call, you know, personal branding. So we're going to talk about what is personal branding, why personal branding is important, why should you even care, right? And we're also going to talk about why I chose to use fashion as my personal branding tool. So if you don't have a beverage of choice, I do. I have my tea, okay, in my slay cup. Um, if you don't have a beverage of choice, go ahead and go get a beverage so that we can be here, talk about this for a little bit. You got questions, you got thoughts, you got input in any sort of way. Please, I encourage you to put them into the comments so that way I know all about what it is that is on your mind. All right, so let's talk about personal branding and what it is. So I looked like I looked at all these different 
resources, but the one that I love to go to is Wikipedia. All right. I, it, yes, it is in our it's on our phones and it is a social media platform, if you will. But this is what Wikipedia says. Wikipedia says that personal branding is the conscious and intentional effort to create and influence public perception of an individual by positioning them as an authority in their industry, elevating their credibility and differentiating themselves from the competition to ultimately advance their career, widen their circle of influence and have a larger impact. That is what Wikipedia says about personal branding. And it is a process, y'all. It is a process. And there's so many different elements. Like I said, there are so many little things that you have in your arsenal. These are all things that you already have that you can use to leverage every single day because these are things that you can do because at every place you go, every person that you encounter, they need to feel your brand. Now, if you got and I know we got professionals in here, but if you got a raggedy brand, no one is going to want to interface with that. All right. But if you have a brand that is strong, meaning when I go out to places, people recognize me as a slay queen. All right. Out of nowhere, I've had people come up to me and talk to me and said, hey, are you on the um, Facebook? I've seen your, your videos before. All right. Aren't you the slay queen? Oh my goodness, you know, I, I knew it was you. Those are things that we can say, hey, 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 my queen, Latrice is in the building. So welcome on in. All right. And she's going to appreciate this conversation. She's going to have a lot to share when we get to the fashion piece. Okay. So please, Latrice, thank you so much for being here. And whatever you have on your mind, my queen, go ahead and put it into the comments so that way we can learn and we can have a discussion together. So thank you. Okay. So when we are in our personal branding, all right, like I said, it is about us, all right? What do people feel when they interface with you? What kind of emotions are you trying to invoke? And really what the question is, is what do you want to be remembered for, all right? And how do you want to be remembered? These are the things that we need to do every single day. We need to be mindful of what type of personal brand that we are. And it has to be authentic, meaning you can't be copying somebody else. It's not going to look right. If you are over there in a the corner, you're stunning somebody, stalking somebody, and then all of a sudden you come up out of the blue, all right, and you start posting things. And, and I'm telling you right now, if you are not authentic with your personal brand, nobody's going to be paying attention to you. They're not going to be paying attention to those amazing products and services that you have to offer. They're not going to be paying attention to the value that you can bring because you are not in your own personal voice, right? So Chevy is in the building. She says, our branding is about us. Yes. Amen. That's what we're talking about tonight. So thank you for being here, Chevy. And Miss Leslie, Madame in the building, I like how do you want to be remembered for? Yeah, that's that's the question of the evening. And Kathy's here. Thank you so much for being here as well, Kathy, my queen. She says facts 100%. We got a lot of people who are posting video clips and information that's not theirs. And then all of a sudden they're trying to spin it to make it look like it's their stuff. That's not what I'm trying to encourage. I'm trying to have people come out of their own shells and do their own thing. People are more attracted to that. You want to have people come to you instead of people coming to you and be like, no, I don't want none of that. I don't want to feel any of that. And if you are transitioning from a long career, this is talking about re-emerging. We are re-emerging with our authentic personal brand. Because if you have worked as long a career, and for those that are reviewing in and you're not sure who is speaking, okay, let me just share you a little background. I am a veteran. 
I'm a proud woman veteran. I served 30 years, three decades in the United States Air Force. I retired in October of 2021. Before I retired, I was already working on my authentic personal brand. In fact, I got onto stages and said, hey, y'all, okay, we're going to be slaying out here. And people were like, I don't even know what you're talking about. But then I broke it down for them and I allowed to see them in the story. And they were the hero in the story. And when people came to me, they were like, you know what? And my, and my rank at that time, y'all, was chief. Chief, we slaying it. And they would just tell me how they would be slaying it. They would tell me how they were staying ready and being prepared. They were telling me how they were leading their organizations and their teams. They were telling me how they were building a community around them. And they were like family. And they were telling me, you know what? We have a built to, to last mindset. We are not giving up. We're going to keep moving forward. Even though it looks all crazy, we are still we are still here. We are still standing. And that you when you have people regurgitating what you have been putting into them, you know you have a strong personal brand. And so that is what we're going to be talking about. But I just gave you again what is personal branding. And this is all about finding your uniqueness. All right. This is about you coming out with your differentiating factors. Different pays. I'm going to repeat that again. Different pays. When you are on social medias, and I, I scroll in reels, you know, just like everybody else every now and again, and I see the same people looking the same way in the same outfits. To, it, it is, I can't take it. Because I'm like, what is the difference? What are you doing differently outside of that? So what do you want to be remembered for? And how are you putting that effort in? You have to build a reputation, which takes time. It takes time, effort, and energy. But you have to be able to build your reputation for the things you want to be known for. And then one step further, you have to allow yourself to be known for them. You can't be hiding in the corner. You can't be saying, you know what, I, I, I put myself out there, but ah, I just don't wanna do that like that. All right, and when you transition from a long career, you're gonna have to revisit this. You have to figure out who you, do you want to be? Who are you? All right, rediscovering you. And that is a process, it's taken me almost uh, I say over two years now to really figure out, hey, this is how I want to present myself. This is how I want people to know, you know, I really want them to know me for outside of the military. I have another story to tell. And yes, I am 51. And a lot of us, again, are probably over the age, I would say 45, 46, all the way up to 60. 65 years old that views in who's part of my audience and we really think that age is a factor no let's look at it differently age is a privilege everything else that we do is a choice okay age is a privilege because we have value we have experience we have expertise we have skills we have mastered things over and over and over again we are the ones that are sharing with the younger generation how we used to do it and we you know we don't put you know limitations on them because they're dreaming big right but we tell them hey here are the things that we had that we encountered and that we had to face Hey, Kayron, how are you, my queen? Thank you for being here. Mosaic Inc. is in the house tonight. Thank you so much, ladies. Yes, love, love, love it. Age is a privilege. It is a privilege. It is, it is not dooms and glooms, okay? And so when we have the opportunity, like some of us have, to kind of step out there in our own way, create our own narrative, and what is the story? And we continue to, to tell those stories. This is when people are most drawn to us. All right. So that is essentially what personal branding is. All right. And you have to be your own brand. The brand is called you. And again, I said different pace. 
what is that consistent perception of you? When people are looking on social media, because social media, if you're not in social medias, okay, on at least one to two platforms, then then I, I'm not talking to you, all right? I, I, I know that you're here and you're probably viewing in for Facebook, and Facebook is a base, right? Facebook is my base. That's where my family, my friends are. But what other platforms are you using to showcase your authentic personal brand? There's so many out there, all right? So what are you investing your time in as you're building your personal brand? Because when we create something that conveys a message, we're talking about we want that to be monetized. All right. We just not making creating things just to be out here making and thinking create unless you're trying to be a social influencer. If that's if that's what you're wanting to do and you're, you know, want to, you know, be a community advocate. And that's, you know, I love that as well. But if you're looking to generate income. Then you need to make sure that you create something that conveys a powerful message and people can circle around and get behind. So the three elements that we're going to be talking about tonight, y'all, dun, 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 dun. first, we're going to talk about how do you speak? How does your authentic personal brand speak? So there's a lot of talking, okay? A lot of talking. You know, I've, I've said this before. Again, if I offend anyone, it's probably because, you know, it's, it's getting to you in a, such a way, hopefully it'll inspire you to do something differently. All right. But there are a lot of people who are talking, 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 talking. And when they're talking, nobody's really listening. All right. And so what are you speaking about? Is it anything that's worth speaking about? All right. And I know when people repost, people repost things, right? They put it onto their uh, another page or whatnot, but they don't give their reflection, their thoughts behind it. And so I'm like, I'm always interested to know what your feelings are about that. So how do you speak? Well, for me, there there's some very consistent messaging that I do, and it's on all my platforms. I have a tagline: "Keep on slaying until you can't slay no more." You will see that on on all the things. That's my own personal tagline. All right, you will see two fingers in LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn and you have seen my post, I put a you know big descriptor at the top, and I put two fingers. Why? Because I put up two fingers when I take pictures. And that's who I am. All right. I do put little icons and emojis on things. I, I don't shy away from that because that's how I feel. That's how I want to be presented. All right. So when you can find those things that are consistent in your messaging and then you can share over and over again, people are going to be like, OK, I see the purpose. I see the vision. I see the clarity. I see the tone OK, of their of their inflections. I see them talking without hesitation because this is an easy conversation for them to have. They're speaking about things that I want to get involved in. You know, you're putting people behind the cause. Slay to Success is a mission, a movement, and a ministry. That's how I view this non traditional business that I have. All right. Because what I want is the feeling. I want women to feel empowered to step with, out with confidence and the abilities that they have, all right? So that is the, what I'm trying to exude, all right? I give extra attention to the audience that I have. Every time on, on here or any other audience that I have on in my platforms, I give special attentions because when we stand on stages, because there's a lot of us, okay, there's thought leaders, there's coaches, there's consultants, there's mentors, there's business owners, entrepreneurs, there's a, authors, there's a lot of people that are different than when I had when I was in the military that I'm learning so much for. But if we're in those categories, we got to be able to stand on stages, and speak to what we do and why we do that. And we got to have stuff that is, you know, for our audience, we have to deliver the right information to the right audience instead of just talking, talking, talking about something that's not really going to be relatable or resonating. It has to be memorable. 
you have to give people something that they can remember. I have sat in a thousand and one speaking engagements, especially when I was in the military, y'all. After every graduation that they have, they have, or at the graduation, they have a keynote speaker that comes in. Either someone that's on the base or someone who's part of the organization, somebody who flies in and so forth and so on. I, I can probably tell you maybe two of all the ones that I remember. I just don't remember it because it was all bland. It was the same old talk. There was no spin on it. It was leadership. Okay. And leadership, there's so much that goes on in leadership that we have to find that niche. If you're in leadership, and for me, it's this personal branding. All right. Behind the scenes, y'all, leadership, wellness, and mindset, ma excuse me, mindset sits right behind me. But at the front of it, we're going to talk about personal branding and how that affects your ability to get these opportunities that you always constantly say, I want that. All right. So this is this is a part of it. And we're going to be speaking to it. So if you got some information to share, go ahead and put it in the chat. All right. Have a uh, have a question. Put it in the chat. This is your time. All right. So what are you speaking about and how are you speaking? Do you have an elevator pitch? All right. Do you have a personal brand statement? Do you have something that people will like? I do this. And when I do this, this is the impact that I have. Everyone should have it, regardless if you have a business or not. This is your own way of communicating what you do and how you do it. And why is it so special? So the first element, again, is about how are we speaking? All right. Now, I've had to learn, too. I grew up in military jargon and acronyms. And people outside of the military have zero clue what you're talking about when you start talking in acronym language. You have to be able to speak to the right audience with the right language. If I'm out there doing a networking event or providing presentation, which I'm going to be providing a presentation at the end of this month for the Chamber of Commerce, there will be no military jargon in the net. And if there is, it's going to be spelled out. And it has to be something that is relatable to what I'm talking about. If it's not, you just leave it out. All right. So our, our language, our grammar, our tone, our inflections, they all matter. And they are part of your authentic personal brand. The second element to your personal brand is how do you act? And is it in congruence with how do you speak? All right. So our personality plays a huge role <laughs> in our authentic personal brand. I know that I'm not for everybody. And I don't and I don't even I like I don't even want to be for everybody. All right. The way that I speak, the way I show up are for the people that have been assigned to me. I have unique personality traits. I've had to ask friends, colleagues, you know, co-workers, family, like, tell me, y'all, some of my personality traits. And I really had to figure out how to receive the feedback because, you know, we do all have some things that are not favorable, if you will, right? And so when I have ha I've had to ask this question several times over the past couple of years. Because when I heard, when I was in the military, it was, you're intimidating. You're a bulldog. You're no nonsense. All right. And so coming out of that, and if you're transitioning, coming out of a long career, what are the qualities that you want to be most connected to now in your next chapter? And those qualities for me are passionate, confident, strong, powerful, athletic, the real deal, inspirational. Those are the words that I've been hearing more often over the past couple of years. And so we really need to ask what are these personality traits? And, and if they are incongruent with where we want to be. Hi, James. What's up? Happy New Year. 
I see you down there from LinkedIn. That's right. Thank you for stopping in and coming here on the live show. Appreciate you. If you have any questions or comment or feedback, go ahead and light up that chat, okay? Because that I'm here for it. So we have to establish our character personality as we transition because sometimes we are in survival mode. I was in survival mode. I would say 75, maybe 80% of the time while I was in the military, because there's always something coming up. Hi, Queen. Hey, Sharice. Welcome on in. These are all my military veterans in the house. Thank you all for being here tonight. So we're talking about transitioning, okay, and having an authentic personal brand. So you have to establish your character personality and you have to establish it right away and you have to embody that, all right? That's how I wanna show up. I wanna show up passionate, confident, strong, powerful, athletic, the real deal, inspiring, right? And if I continue to get feedback that that's, when I'm, that's what they see and that's how they perceive me, then I know I'm on the right track because I'm protect, protecting my reputation and I am protecting my personal brand, all right? So how are you acting, all right? Um, when we are talking about this strong personal brand, y'all, it's really about who are you? Your, your field of focus, what are, you, what are you good at? What is really what people come to you about? Your life history and not shying away from sharing the good, bads, the uglies and in-betweens of that your personality qualities, your values, um, those unique things about you. So, you know, just to test the waters here, right? Some of us uh, may not know what comes unique to us, but I'm going to share with you all my unique qualities. Here's a, the top 10 things that I felt like I am different and I own because this is just who I am. One, I'm a workout alcoholic. I have a strong workout regimen. 51 years old, still doing burpees. I'm okay with that. Years ago, I would probably shy away from it and, and be embarrassed to tell people that I really enjoy high intensity workouts because people would kind of gave, gave me the side eye. You shouldn't be doing that. You know, you're too old for that, you know, kind of thing. And for me, that is my safe space. And I've been doing it for a long time and I've been very consistent with that. So that makes me unique. You see a 51-year-old, 52-year-old doing sprints on a treadmill. That's not an everyday occurrence. Okay. I spent 30 years in the United States Air Force. That's very unique. I'm a black woman, as you all can see. All right. There's a lot of obstacles, hurdles, adversities, and challenges that I didn't even think that existed until I was in some, some highly influential roles and realized not everyone gets to 30 years of service, especially a black woman from Kokomo, Indiana. I'm unique because I'm married to another veteran who also served 30 years in the Air Force in his own right. To be married to another veteran and still have a amazing marriage, been married for over 20 years, Okay, that is not an easy feat to do. I'm unique because I had a baby at the age of 37 after we had a failed IVF, which is an in virtual, in, 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 okay, y'all, in vitro fertilization procedure. I had to get my words right, all right? I had an IVF and they said, hey, y'all ain't gonna be able to have children, all right? But we ended up having a miracle baby. Anyway, naturally, um, I'm unique because I show up in pink. Every day is my as a pink day here. All right, and people are like, oh, well, I can't do a color every day. Well, it speaks to me and it speaks to my soul. Um, I started a business from scratch, y'all, from scratch. That makes me very unique because the likelihood of a business thriving and continuing to move forward after about the first year, the, the statistics, statistics, they fall really deep, 
Okay. And people just give up. And I said, you know, you know what? I'm the first woman in my immediate family to have started a business from scratch. I lost 60 pounds before I came into the military. And I can say to this day, I have maintained that weight loss over 30 years. That doesn't happen all the time. People, people who have uh, lost weight, it's harder to maintain the weight loss than to get it off. I'm unique because I talk about leadership. And when I talk about leadership, I talk about it in the slay mode with the acronym. So we all have unique qualities about us that we can tap into. Make a list. All right. Make a list and give yourself that celebration of those achievements that you've had. And now it's time for you to show up in it so you can gain lucrative opportunities. OK. And Chevy says, yes, Queen, wealth is our health. It absolutely is. All right. And I know people will, you will say, well, I, this, this conversation ain't for me. And, and again, th if you're not looking to get opportunities, this is not, this is not the conversation. All right. But if you're looking for more in 2024, this is where you need to be because I'm giving you a little bit of the strategies. So that way you can start working your magic the way it needs to be worked. Okay. And then the last thing that I could say, y'all, my personal branding that I'm using, and some of you, again, that are probably listening like, oh, no, here it comes, is how do you look? How are you showing up? So I, I'm going to get on a soapbox here for a minute. All right. So many times women have called me and they're in distress. And they're calling me because they're being misheard, un, you know, misunderstood, not being heard. Um, there's a lot of miscommunication going on. And I'm talking specifically now about women who have served in the military who or who are currently serving in the military. And one of the things that I like to do is I like to, for the, the individual to start thinking about some things. And one of the questions after we get further in the conversation, and so that way, you know, I'm in the empathetic, nurturing point, I start pivoting around, all right? And I talk about how do you show up? Are you looking the part? Did you just get up and said, you know what? I'm just going to go do what I do and not really putting any thought behind what you're wearing, what environment you're in. You know, for me, it's first impressions are lasting impressions. All right. I chose to use fashion as a branding tool because it has gotten me into doors that I didn't think were even desirable. Based on, I saw you in an outfit, I know you're going to wear pink, and I love what you're doing. When I show up, y'all, I show up and anticipate an opportunity, all right? That means from my head down to the toe, all right? We are in a world or society where bonnets on heads and flip-flops and slippers are the the article of choice to go out when you're out and about. You will never find me in a bonnet on my head or slippers. I don't care if I'm going into Walmart for two 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 hot seconds. All right? Because my aura, what I stand for, my brand, when I say I'm a slay queen means that I come out in full effect. So what does your brand represent? Are you giving those long lasting impressions? Is it memorable? People have, you know, they, they get into a fit of frustration because no one's reaching out to me. No one really gets me. No one understands me. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I'll, I, I've taken women on trips to the, to the mall because now I'm in the personal styling, personal branding space. And I'm like, okay, well, we want to talk about 
what are the clothes, the style that you want to show up in? That's where we're going to be at, especially for women who transition from a long career. If you are in law enforcement or in a service of, with uniform or military, you know what our wardrobes look like, y'all. Okay. There were like khakis and polos and, you know, we were very safe. We wore like safe clothing because we didn't want to be standing out. You know, we, it, it, there's a purpose for everything, right? Military's purpose is for everyone to come together for a shared vision. All right. And the ultimate is to fight wars. All right. So we're not thinking about all these other details outside of that. But when you come into a civilian world and you are a thought leader, a community advocate, a coach, a consultant, a you know mentor, a what else I got down here, y'all? I mean, we, we got all these entrepreneurs, business owners, right? We have all these different things that we want to do in our next chapter. But this is a time that we need to we, we need to spend a little bit more time. First of all, we're older. All right. When we're older and mature and seasoned, we can do another spin on what we look like and we know what the details look like. And we get into the details. All right. Dress codes. All right. We need to understand what dress codes are. Um, a lot of times, again, They'll say business casual, semi-formal, you know, semi-casual. There's a lot of different dress codes. And some women just don't get it right. And what I've heard, people come to me and they'll say, you know, I should have worn this. Oh, I had a beautiful necklace I could have worn. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I had some really great shoes I should. And it's all this in regret. I'm like, so why didn't you show up? This is the opportunity for you to show up. You want a brand that is long lasting and you want a reputation. All right. You want to build credibility. You want people to reach out to you after the fact. All right. Well, that's that's what we need to do. Right. And so that's why I lead in with the personal branding, because personal branding can help people learn more about you. Personal branding can and that people can get to know you better. They, they can use your brand to get people to join in with you, to support you, to partner with you. And most importantly, they end up trusting you. And when we're out trying to get advancements and careers and opportunities, opportunities don't happen in real time. Most of the times you're not even part of the conversation. It's after the fact. So. How we, first of all, how we speak and knowing our audience and what we're speaking about. Two, how do we act and is it incongruent with how we speaking? And three, how do we look? All right. And my line is dress for success or slay to success. All right. Whichever one, for me, it would be slay to success. Okay. And we have to express our authentic personality within that. That means we got to show up different if you're in this space, all right? Because we got to position our personal and our professional identity. And it really boils down to finding and discovering, rediscovering, if you will, who you are and what is most truest to you. Like I could speak on this all day because this is how... It is for me, like this is my bread and butter, if you will, because I started to see that I was separating myself from everyone else when I was still serving in the military. And I was scared as all get out, y'all. I was scared because if I wasn't talking or, uh, you know, uh, having the perspective like others had, because it's a risk. It's a risk. If you step out and you're speaking boldly to things that you're very passionate about, it's a risk. But I was willing to take the risk. And now after I've transitioned, I'm taking more risk and really put myself out there. My 
my my whole premise of this was okay let's see about this professional speaking is that something for you and it is all right and so i had to be confident what do i i power myself with confident clothes i armor myself with with powerful clothes i put them on and you see follow me on instagram y'all y'all are already follow me and i know most of you all are but I'm showing different types of outfits that I am wearing when I go out to these different types of events. And I'm understanding which one of these articles of clothing or outfits are going to be laying the right way for when they say, I remember you because you were wearing a certain outfit. And women come to me and they want compliments. They want to be noticed. They want to be seen. They don't want to fade in the background. Sometimes we do want to say, okay, well, we want to just be the background worker or whatever. We just want to be the back of the whatever it is. No, I mean, yeah, that's 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 fine. But in our time, all right, and I'm talking specifically to women that are 45 years and older who have just decided that this is not my time and my time has gone and it has passed by. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. This is, I'm talking to you, all right? And all it takes is a very conscious and intentional effort every day, all right? So if you say you like pinks, yellows, and oranges, you got to have a pink, yellow, and orange attitude. It's got to be matching. You say you want to be bright and colorful and all these other things, and then you put on the outfit and it's doom and gloom, and you're negative, and you got a bad attitude. Don't pick those colors, okay? Because those are going to just bring your brand all the way down. <laughs> all right? <laughs> because I, I, I'm telling you, it, it, hey, Kimberlyn, how are you, my queen? Yes, it's conscious, and it's, inter it's intentional. We are showing up in a certain way, making sure that people see us. And they don't forget about us. If you say you want to be out here and some people are like, I don't know where to start in LinkedIn. Okay. Because the LinkedIn is a more of the professional world if you're not. And I'm like, start with LinkedIn. That is a platform where you can meet new people all the time. I've gotten 99% of my opportunities from LinkedIn. I have met people in person. I've done coffee and virtual chats. I have done a lot of connections in LinkedIn. But the reason why the LinkedIn is, is growing is because, number one, when you're posting, you got to be answering the post. Stop ghosting folks. All right. If you're saying, OK, I want my brand to be out here and I am trying to build something after transitioning, you can't be ghosting people. That means if people put a comment, you got to answer them. All right. You got to post regularly and post original content, not anybody else's video clips and not anybody else's graphic. You got to be going to the LinkedIn messaging and and welcoming people to your network, making them feel like they are a part of if that's what you're trying to do. But this slay queen here, I am trying to build something bigger, which is a movement, okay? It's a movement that I am trying to build. I want to be an encourager and inspirational. I want you to be like, you know what? I know one person. I know one person, all right, who if I reached out to her, she would tell me and she'd get me all the way right, okay? That'd be me because I don't believe anyone in this world it's just here just to be here. Every one of us has a duty. Every one of us has a job to be doing. And every one of us has a platform to be doing it on. You have with all these platforms that we got. You have a platform. What are you using it for? All right. What are you trying to, to build? And Dwayne's here. Thank you, Dwayne, for being here. He said, Happy New Year. Fantastic. I prayed and asked God, who am I? I to you. What's my calling? He clearly let me know you're an encourager. It, it feels natural. Absolutely. I know people know, 
but they're, they're, they're scared. They're not as confident. All right. And confidence is something, it's a skill. You have to build this skill. You have to practice it every single day. All right. What are those elements of, of the confidence that you are practicing? So that way you're not falling into the trap that I, I just can't do this. Nothing is impossible. I'll tell you that right now. It is limitless. There's no way you could tell me two years ago that I would be where I'm at right now, y'all. No way. Not this girl. Because I was so reliant on the military. And that has been my life for three decades. And when I stepped out, I said, I'm stepping out because I have so much more in me to talk about and so much more to do. So thank y'all for being here. All right. And I know some of us are like, well, I don't know where to begin. I have several different courses. The one that I have that I just launched is step, um, excuse me, strategize your next chapter, building your own personal brand outside of a 20 plus year career. All right. So you can go to my website. You know what it is, y'all. www.slaytosuccess.com. And I put up my QR scan code so you can scan that if you want, but you can jump on my website, see exactly what I'm talking to. But this is essentially six sessions that we're going to go through so that way you can build your authentic personal brand and you have a transformational plan as to how you're going to go out and you're going to positively influence and impact the world in such a way that your legacy will live for generations and generations and generations to come, which we all strive to have. I honestly believe we all strive to have that. All right. So are there any questions and comments, y'all? What are some takeaways, if anything, for y'all that are still hanging out that you glean from this discussion? James says, appreciate you. Keep slaying. Tell Dom. I said, what's up? I let him know. He downstairs, he grilled y'all. He grilled almost every Sunday. I love him for that because mama don't like to cook a lot. So <laughs> he grills and I can just eat meat all, all week. So thank you so much. I'll let him know. If there anyone else who took anything away and would like to share a comment or ask me a question, because we have a little bit of time. So if you got a question that you want to ask me, or if you've got a comment to make, Please let it be known, let it be heard, um, so that way we can give you a shout out. Again, we, we talked about personal branding, all right? So if there's not anything and everybody is good, everybody's good. So thank you all, y'all, for being here live with me tonight. I really, truly, honestly appreciate that because you could be anywhere else. And you decided to hang out with me for a little bit. I am Rochelle Slay Queen Hemingway, the CEO and founder of Slay to Success, a leadership and transformational consultant service business. And thank you, Chevy. That's right. Because that's what I'm doing. All right. From here on out, this is what y'all going to get. <laughs> and y'all going to be like, whoo. You know, it's a lot. But you know what? I feel most comfortable so I appreciate the feedback. I feel most comfortable talking about what I'm talking about. And I'm very passionate about it because I want everybody to be able to have opportunity. I don't ever want to think that no one has the right things, if you will, to do to get things that they are be in places and spaces that they would like to be in. And it's all about how are you presenting yourself? How are you presenting? How are you showing up for you? How are you showing up for you? Not for anybody else. And when we continue to do that, you will see people will get excited about your brand. People will love you for your brand. And we, and we don't care what anybody else is saying. All right. We do, we do appreciate feedback, right? But we don't have to dwell in, well, they said this and they said that. So therefore, that's what I do now. All right. So Thank you all for being here. Keep on slaying until you can't slay no more. 
Take care. And if you come back, hashtag replay in the comments for me, please. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.